It is time to check out another RTX 4090 graphics card and this time around I will be talking about this Supreme Liquid X from MSI. Now this is obviously a water-cooled version of the RTX 4090 and with this model you can see that MSI was really focusing on making a really clean, uh, really elegant and professional looking card but also on keeping it really quiet. So let's see how it performs and how it compares to the Founders Edition, to the ROG Strix and Gigabyte Gaming OC I reviewed already. So let's go. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high quality power supplies are extremely efficient. They are very quiet due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They offer a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind. And you even get the new 12 volt high power connection that you need for these brand new RTX 4090 graphics cards from Nvidia. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there. And as a nice bonus, you get a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. The MSI Supreme Liquid X is a bit different from the other RTX 4090 cards because instead of a massive heatsink, it uses an external radiator to get rid of the heat. That keeps the main part of this card a little bit more reasonable in size than the other cards I've tested so far, but even if it's only two slots thick, you still need to make sure it has some room to breathe. This design also means that you will need to have a spot in your case to mount this 240 millimeter radiator, so you should definitely not forget to take that into account. MSI said that they want to keep their Gaming X Trio line for a more gamer focused design, while these Supreme models should be the more elegant ones, and I think that they did a great job achieving that. The card itself looks gorgeous with its brushed aluminum sides, a beautiful metal backplate, and this brand new Supreme logo that has a nice geometric feel to it. Now the logo, the letters and the line that is next to the fan uh, light up white by default, but they are RGB LEDs, so you can change the color if you prefer or you can turn it off completely. One of my favorite parts is that they managed to keep the card itself completely clean from cables. So water-cooled cards usually have a bunch of cables just coming out of the card everywhere and then going up the tubes all the way to the fans on the radiator. But MSI here managed to tuck in the cables completely under the sleeves, which truly gives it this clean and elegant look. You can only see a couple of cables on the side of the radiator fans that are cable managed perfectly and that will also be completely out of sight once you mount the radiator. And speaking of tubes, I found them to be surprisingly flexible, which will make the whole installation much more manageable and much easier. It is powered by the same 16 pin 12 volt high power connector that all other 4090 cards use as well. And MSI also includes an adapter to connect four 8 pin PCIe connectors instead. But just as I said before, uh, that will just ruin the clean look of this card and I really do recommend grabbing a longer power supply cable from your power supply brand. So Sezonic, We'll send you this cable if you bought a power supply that is strong enough for this card, but some newer models have the cable already included, and this goes for many other power supply brands as well. In terms of extra features, you get a dual BIOS with a little switch to swap between the two options, uh, with the silent BIOS actually being the default one, and you also get the usual fan stop feature when the GPU doesn't have much to do. And as a little extra, you get this Supreme mousepad as well. In terms of connections, you get three display ports and one HDMI 2.1 port, which is similar to the Founders Edition and the Gigabyte card, with only the ROG card offering a second HDMI port. When it comes to the chip itself, the RTX 4090 is very impressive. Uh, compared to the last generation RTX 3090, it is uh, on average about 60% faster on 4K resolution, making 4K 120 gaming completely possible, even without turning the DLSS on. It is 41% faster than the RTX 3090 on Quad HD resolution, and even on 1080p, where games are so CPU dependent, there is a significant improvement of 22% compared to the 3090. 
But how does this card compare to the other three 49ers I've tested so far? So if we look at pure clock speeds, um, MSI showed a small improvement over the Founders Edition, averaging at about 2739 megahertz in the gaming BIOS and 2733 megahertz in the silent BIOS. So both are pretty similar. And even though that seems like very little, it is important to remember that the Founders Edition already boosts itself way over the default specs, and it is not all that different from the rest of the cards. And if you also look at a couple of games, those single digit FPS differences between each of these four cards are pretty insignificant, and I don't think you will ever be able to tell one from the other while gaming. But the noise level of this card has a much bigger impact, with a result of around 40 decibels in both bio settings, uh, with the measuring tool set at 50 centimeters distance, both from the main fan and the radiator fans, it is noticeably quieter than the Founders Edition, as well as the Gigabyte Gaming OC, and it is pretty much on par with the air-cooled ROG Strix card. Now, I did think that the difference in noise levels between the two BIOS settings is a bit small because the fan speed did drop a bit in the silent profile, but then the overall noise from the card and from its radiator just didn't sound that different at all. Doesn't really matter because both profiles are silent enough. I just kind of expected the silent one to be more silent, I guess. Now, when it comes to thermal performance, the GPU core temperatures were significantly lower as well, uh, ranging from six to nine degrees less compared to the Founders Edition. And they're also beating both the louder gaming OC card as well as the equally silent ROG Strix card. The situation is pretty much the same when it comes to the hotspot temperature, uh, but if we look at the memory temperature, it is actually a bit higher than on other cards. Now, I do suspect that Gigabyte sensors are measuring this in a bit more of a favorable position, looking at the big gap between the cards, but still, it is also important to remember that memory modules are fine if they are a bit warm, as long as they don't get too hot, so 80 to 90 degrees should still be more than fine. And if we look at all four cards, the results I measured were completely fine. And one of the reasons for that is that uh, all manufacturers were designing these cards to deal with a 600 watt power consumption in mind. But the TDP of the 4090 chip ended up being 450 watts. And while fully loaded, it even uses slightly less than that. Now this Supreme, for example, was using uh, between 435 and 445 watts. And if I look at the power draw uh, of the whole test bench with an i9-12900K with this card, it was pulling between 620 and 630 watts from the wall. So again, if you have a good quality 850 watt power supply, you should be completely fine. But if you are just buying a new power supply and you were thinking of getting a 4090, I would recommend to get a 1000 watt model because it will be running closer to its peak efficiency, uh, which will also make it quieter. And you will have some headroom for overclocking. And more importantly, you will be ready for the next CPU upgrade as they are rumored uh, to pull even more power than their predecessors. So this MSI Supreme Liquid X performs quite well, and just like other third-party cards, it is not much faster than the Founders Edition, which kind of puts a lot of pressure on this card, but also on any other high-end version on the market. You do get some extras here, so the design is sleek and clean, uh, the liquid cooling might fit your system a bit better than the large air-cooled cards, and it is quieter. But still, the price will play a huge part in making a decision between all these cards. Now, MSI told us that the Gaming X Trio will actually be their $1,600 MSRP model, while this water-cooled Supreme, as well as the air-cooled Supreme, uh, will be their more expensive flagship model. So, while I think it is important to see how much of a premium you will have to pay for this card, I definitely think that uh, keeping an eye on that Gaming X Trio will be a bit more interesting as I'm sure that that card will probably perform just as well as the four models I've tested so far. Anyway, I hope that this was enough to give you an idea of what to expect if you do end up going for this one. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do consider subscribing to this channel to never miss an upload. Bye guys and see you in the next one. Bye!